We'll start by discussing the state of the banking industry before delving into the latest updates on AMC, GameStop, and their presence in the S&P 500, with a particular focus on JP Morgan. Hello everyone. Welcome to Daily Stock Update. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But before that, alert this is not a financial advice video. JP Morgan, a name that's been making headlines for all the wrong reasons lately. The bank recently revealed that they are potentially facing a colossal $1.4 billion in losses due to credit risk in the third quarter of 2023. This is a provision for credit losses that stems from an increase in bad debts, which are likely to be written off to the tune of $770 million in the same quarter. To put it succinctly, things aren't looking good for JP Morgan, which happens to be America's largest and riskiest bank. According to the 2020 Systemic Risk Indicators provided by the Federal Financial Institutions Examination Council, specifically when it comes to net charge-offs, an indicator of bad debts that may be written off, JP Morgan has seen an alarming average increase of 20.1% over the last four quarters. In a year's time, from Key 3 2022 to Key 3 2023, JP Morgan's bad debt increased by a staggering 105.9%. If this trend continues and JP Morgan's bad debt keeps increasing at an average rate of 20.1% each quarter by Key 3 2024, the bank could be looking at a staggering $11.162 billion in total net charge-offs for that period. And if this pattern persists for another year, JP Morgan might have to report approximately $29.773 billion in net charge-offs for the following time frame. Clearly, this is a situation that can escalate quickly, and it's of utmost concern given that JP Morgan is considered America's largest and riskiest bank. On a related note, let's consider the recent remarks by Ken Griffin regarding the South Korean regulator's decision to impose restrictions on short selling. This move was aimed at curbing illegal short selling activities by global investment banks, especially those that have significant influence in the market. While it's hard to be in agreement with Ken Griffin on many things, he may have a point here. It's becoming increasingly evident that regulatory bodies, like the SEC, need to pay closer attention to the activities of banks. This doesn't absolve the need to monitor hedge funds, but it does underscore the importance of addressing issues within the banking sector. Now let's shift our focus to AMC and take a closer look at its order book. AMC has been displaying some promising signs, with significant buy orders amounting to 16000 The stock is currently trading at $11.22, showing a gain of 4.66% for the day. It has successfully breached the $10.75 level, which is a positive development. The next target to watch for is $13.25 for AMC. However, we should be prepared for some resistance around the $11.70 mark as we approach the supply zone. Nevertheless, the overall outlook is optimistic, and I believe we could reach $13.25 this week. An increase in trading volume as the stock rises will serve as additional confirmation. Currently, there are 3.2 million shares available to borrow for AMC. When we consider the call-to-put ratio, it's clear that more people are betting bullishly on AMC, with almost no puts expiring in the money compared to a substantial number of calls. All these factors suggest that AMC is looking strong not only on the chart, but also in the options market. However, it's worth noting that there are still 238,000 short exempts on AMC for November 3rd, as evidenced by a recent hammer candle. Shifting our attention to GameStop, we find that it's heading in the opposite direction, as previously anticipated. GameStop is currently trading at $13.70, showing a decline of 1.23% for the day. It hasn't managed to breach the $14.60 level, which means that the bearish trend remains intact. GameStop is likely to head down to $10.10. .10. 
Currently, there are 1.7 million shares available to borrow for GameStop. When we examine the call-to-put ratio for GameStop, it appears to be relatively balanced, with an even distribution between calls and puts. However, it's important to note that more people are betting bullishly on GameStop for the weeks to come. Nevertheless, the high number of short exempts on GameStop, given its substantial trading volume, is a cause for concern. In summary, while AMC is showing strength both in its chart and options market, GameStop seems to be facing some headwinds with a potential downward trajectory. The presence of short exempts on both stocks suggests that there's still uncertainty in the market. It's crucial for investors to stay vigilant and keep an eye on these developments. Friends, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about today's video? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.